Hey, I'm Scott. I live in Ottawa, and uh, it's a place I'm happy and proud to call home. One thing I want to do before I die uh, is definitely travel. I love to travel even though I haven't been given much opportunity to do so so far. Uh, one thing I hope to gain from Algonquin College is, uh, of course, good grades, good responsibility skills, make me a more productive person. The film I chose to review is called Chasing Ice. It's a documentary highlighting the physical and visual effects of climate change. Uh, it's brought even more attention to the effects of climate change and the rise of global temperature. Uh, not only is James Baylog, who is an environmental photographer in this film, uh, showing the beauty of natural itself, but more so uh, the historical landmarks that may never be seen again. The background of climate change is not just a problem of economic values uh, and do's and don'ts, but more of a problem of human perception. Why Chasing Ice? Uh, it's definitely easily accessible. I found it on Netflix and I've seen it before, so I do have some prior knowledge on the film. I rate Chasing Ice a solid 4 out of 5 stars. Why not the extra star from me? I'm no professional film critic, but uh, there's always room for improvement. And uh, although the film was very well made and even got me to do another project on it. My overall impressions on the film were surely positive on a more negative note. In other words, it makes me happy that the images of climate change impacts were so well captured and yet shared on one of the most used streaming sites in the world. And with the reliable sources and interviews, I had some very realistic looking footage. James's work truly had me in awe, and uh, he did a really good job at portraying uh, this issue th through a more visual lens, because apparently the public was tired of hearing of statistics and articles. The most interesting thing I learned watching this documentary is a process in which scientists can measure global temperature uh, and carbon matter from ancient, ancient ages. So by drilling a hole in the ice of a glacier or an ice sheet, they can pull out this cylinder of ice from the ice sheet and in the ice sheet is little tiny air bubbles that have been trapped there for hundreds of thousands of years. Just by measuring the carbon content of these little air bubbles they can measure the global temperature from that age. So I thought that was pretty cool. Talk about world preservation I find it kind of ironic that we determine those results in such a fashion in order to get a message across. Those little tiny air bubbles have been preserved for hundreds of thousands of years, yet we as humans can't seem to preserve the air we're breathing in right now. I also enjoyed an analogy of an interviewed scientist by the name of Gerald Meal, uh, who's a senior scientist at the Natural Center of Atmospheric Research. His analogy was that he related the effects of a baseball player on steroids hitting a home run to the effects of climate change. Steroids come naturally in our body in very small amounts, but just by adding a little bit, piece by piece, we enhance our performance state and are more likely to hit that home run. Same thing with climate change. Carbon comes naturally in the atmosphere, but just by adding it, it keeps building up. Therefore, we're more likely to increase the Earth's energy to react uh, to climate change, which brings our attention to something called the tipping point, where you won't be able to get that ball back from that home run. This film made me feel embarrassed for a species who has caused such destruction to our planet. And uh, at one point in the film, they showed the largest calving event ever on tape. Um, and there was a giant piece of ice calving off the end of this glacier. And there was a voice in the background that said, it's an entire city turning upside down. This kind of made me think, what if it was an entire city? What if nature previously chose for us to live on glaciers? Who knows? The action that I chose post viewing, uh, I've definitely been recycling more. But on a more larger scale, the action that I'm taking is simply taking this course of environmental studies to advance the objective of better preserving our planet. I believe the purpose of environmental documentaries is to show the world what we've become as a conquering species of this planet and to address the public on what they don't see in their garden or in their, in their backyard, in their neighborhood. I believe the depletion of the ozone is definitely the most threatening problem uh, that the environment has to face. If we had a carbon-free atmosphere, the coral reefs would likely thrive or at least not be threatened by humanity, and our marine life would, be, would have greater numbers. Chasing ice has definitely had a large impact on the way I see the world, and uh, James Baylock has truly inspired me to do more about the greatest threat that uh, humanity has ever faced. Thanks for watching.